alpha sub r plus 1 star, the coefficient in front of x star after applying the subroutine r plus 1 times is equal to alpha sub r star plus 2 times mu sub r, where mu sub r is the average coefficient after applying the oracle to the state psi of r. That is, mu sub r is equal to 1 over 2 to the n, because there's 2 to the n basis states, times 2 to the n minus 1, that's the 2 to the n minus 1 basis states aside from x star, times alpha sub r, which is their coefficient, minus alpha sub r star. And the negative sign is because we're looking at the coefficients after we've applied the oracle to the state. And that negates the coefficient in front of the basis state x star. So we see that so long as this quantity, mu sub r, is positive, the coefficient in front of x star, that is alpha star, increases with each iteration of the subroutine by an amount to mu. So alpha sub r plus 1 star is going to be greater than alpha sub r star, provided that mu sub r is positive. And mu sub r being positive is the same condition as 1 over 2 to the n times 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub r minus alpha sub r star being positive. Just substituting in the expression for mu sub r. Now this quantity is positive whenever alpha sub r star is less than 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub r. That is provided that both of these are positive numbers which in the case we're considering they are. So how many times do we have to apply the subroutine to make alpha sub r star large enough that we have a good probability of collapsing the system to the state x star upon measurement? Let's be concrete and say we want to have a 50% chance of collapsing the system to the state x star. That means that alpha sub f star f just being the number of times we apply the subroutine, is equal to 1 over root 2, because the square of 1 over root 2 is 1 half, the desired probability. Because the state vector is always normalized, we can figure out what alpha sub f is. The normalization condition is that alpha sub f star squared plus 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub f squared is equal to 1. That means 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub f squared is equal to 1 half, because alpha sub f star squared is equal to 1 half. And so alpha sub f is equal to 1 over root 2 times 2 to the n minus 1. And now that we know both alpha sub f star and alpha sub f, we can figure out what mu sub f is. Mu sub f is going to be equal to 1 over 2 to the n times negative alpha sub f star, which is negative 1 over root 2, plus 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub f, which is 1 over root 2 times 2 to the n minus 1. And so we can factor out uh, 1 over root 2, because both terms have that term in common. So we get 1 over root 2 times 1 over 2 to the n times the quantity negative 1 plus root 2 to the n minus 1. And this quantity, negative 1 plus root 2 to the n minus 1, is going to be greater than or equal to root 2 to the n minus 1, where the n minus 1 is all in the exponent. Um, and that's true whenever n is greater than or equal to 4. The way to think about this is that the extra factor of 2 that 2 to the n has over 2 to the n minus 1 more than makes up for the minus 1 that we take off within the square root and the minus 1 we take off outside of the square root whenever n becomes sufficiently large. And sufficiently large just means bigger than or equal to 4 in this case. So the conclusion is that mu sub f is greater than or equal to 1 over root 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 over root 2 to the n minus 1, or 1 half times 1 over root 2 to the n, pushing the two square roots together. Note that this is the smallest mu is going to be throughout the 
entire algorithm. And this is because mu decreases with each iteration of the subroutine. And that's easy to see if we look at what mu is because alpha star gets larger and larger with each application of the subroutine. And that term contributes negative, <laughs> negatively to mu. And alpha sub r, the term that contributes positively to mu, gets smaller with each application of the subroutine. So if mu sub f is equal to 1 half times 1 over root 2 to the n, we know that mu sub r is going to be greater than or equal to 1 half times 1 over root 2 to the n for all r less than or equal to f, which is all r throughout the algorithm, because we stop once we apply the subroutine f times. Having this lower bound on mu also gives us a lower bound on how quickly alpha star increases by. Remember that alpha star increases by an amount to mu with each application of the subroutine. And so alpha star increases by at least one over root two to the n with each application of the subroutine. Since alpha sub zero star, the initial coefficient in front of x star is equal to one over root two to the n, alpha sub r star is going to be at least one over root two to the n, this initial value, plus r, the number of times we apply the subroutine, times one over root two to the n, the minimum amount by which alpha star increases with each of these applications. Or rewriting, this is just one over root two to the n times r plus one. And what we're trying to find out is how many times we have to apply the subroutine to get alpha star to be at least one over root two. So let's equate this number, one over root two to the n times r plus one to one over root two. And we see that this holds when r is equal to root two to the n minus one minus one. And so this is the number of times that we would have to apply the subroutine if alpha star increased by the minimum amount with each application of the subroutine. But we know at the beginning it's going to be increasing faster, so this is really an upper bound on how many times we have to apply the subroutine. So the conclusion is that f, the number of times we apply the subroutine to get alpha star equal to one over root two, is at most root two to the n minus one minus one. And this is the same result that we reached through the geometric analysis. In the classical case, in the worst case, you have to query the oracle two to the n minus one times. In the quantum case, we only have to query the oracle a number of times proportional to root two to the n. And this is an enormous savings. This is the punchline of the whole story.